Hey and welcome back to a new video. It's been a while that we had an episode of viewer mail, but Pete reached out to me over mail and he sent this very special CPU cooler to me from the year 2006. This makes this cooler almost 20 years old and it's quite special. You might be able to read AIO on this and it's an AIO, but built completely different to what we understand nowadays as an AIO. So what we have, for example, on the system running here. That should be quite interesting to check out. You think your data is GDPR compliant just because it's stored on a server in Europe? Not exactly. The US Cloud Act can force American companies to hand over your data to US authorities, even if it's hosted in Europe. With a German provider like Hetzner, your data stays protected under strict German privacy laws and fully under your control. Use Hetzner object storage to store your data flexibly, securely and GDPR compliant. If data protection matters to you, don't take the risk and click on the link in the description and check out Hetzner yourself. Before we start into this video, I just wanted to give the opportunity to ask questions because I realized it's been two or three years that I had a Q&A on this channel and in that time frame a lot of things happened in my private life in like Thermal Grizzly and the YouTube channel and everything and I often read questions here and there about these kind of things but I never really picked them up just yeah, time flies. Uh, I just realized that when I checked out my previous or like last Q&A. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down under this video below, or I will also put a link in the description for a Google Forms where you can also put in your questions if you want to, especially if you want to stay anonymous. And I mean, you can also say that nobody's interested in Q&As and then we skip that, that's up to you. The Xigmatec AIO S80DP was launched in 2006 with a price tag of 59 euros. Now, today with inflation and everything, this would translate to about 90 euros, which I think would still be all right, considering that this is a pretty high-end solution, at least going back to 2006. And back at 2006, this was surely high-end and very special. And for that price, I think, quite interesting. If we just look at the cooler inside the packaging, it looks kind of familiar to other cooling solutions that I have seen before, but maybe not at the time of 2006. So we can spot an aluminum radiator sitting in there and it all seems to be just one huge brick. Not like, you know, a traditional AIO where you have the pump head and some tubing and a radiator. This looks completely different. And if we take a look at the features, it's more small, more silent, more powerful. More silent is something I'm not quite sure. Most of the coolers that we tested from back then, like 15 to 20 years ago, back then almost everybody advertised silent coolers. Most of them turned out to be not silent. So that's something just want to see, yeah, how this thing sounds like once it's running. And of course, application, the older Intel Pentium 4, or like D, and also AMD Athlon 64, AIM2 platform. So time to just unbox this. That's definitely one of the most unique CPU coolers I have seen, especially from the time. I was already active in the overclocking scene at that time and I can't remember seeing this one. So pretty special. No, oh. that could be interesting. Not sure if some corrosion happened here. At least you can see some, I don't know, it looks almost like some of the fluid leaked. I'm not sure if it's already damaged before we even start testing anything. At least the protective film is still in place. But it looks already this will be interesting. A couple hours later and I already modified the piece of plastic. I just took a recent AM5 AIO frame, placed it on top here, marked some of the holes, drilled pilot holes, I drilled bigger ones, so four mounting holes for AM5 and from what I can see it will go on to the motherboard like this. You screw it down over the four holes and then the cooler will be attached through the other threads. I'm not quite sure yet if there is anything additional I have to modify but yeah, we will find out. Before we attempt to mount this one, we first want to take comparison data. So we have the 9800X 3D running at 5.15 gigahertz fixed clock. It's the same system we've been using in the previous videos. So fixed voltage and everything, it should consume about 140 watts. And it will also be interesting, but I think like 
this size radiator should be able to dissipate 140 watts. We will see. And this system is running with a Corsair 360 AIO, which I would say is what we would call a standard these days. Like 360 AIO is probably the most common if you're asking anyone what he thinks an AIO is. I ran the system for 15 minutes first and then took the average of one minute, which is about 77.2 or three degrees Celsius on average on the course. And we see a package power draw of about 145 watts. I have mixed feelings about mounting the block right away. But the thing is, I'm not sure if you're able to hear it, but there is water inside. I can definitely hear water or air at least. And it means that it just didn't all leak out. But with those marks, I'm not sure if something bad happened internally. At the same time, if it's almost 20 years old, I want to avoid taking it apart right away because, you know, gaskets, rubber parts, they, they just become brittle over the years and could fall apart directly when opening it, which could potentially just ruin what we're trying to do. So I think we'll just try to mount it first, see if we can mount it and then open it later. Let's see if this works with a frame as I'm thinking. I first wanted to reuse the ones from the original AMD mounting bracket, but then I saw they are just too short. Took these ones from whatever radiator, could be Corsair. It's a UNC type screw and they, on the other hand, could be way too long. That will be the question, but I also need some with a small head. Yeah, but that could also collide with the block. I will, I will see. The screws are still sticking out quite a bit. I think it's fine. I was worried for a second that I'm just screwing into the bench table, but that should be all right. By the way, bench table available again in the Thermal Gracie store if you want to check that out. And now I want to see if this works. Yeah, feels all right. I think I will just put some paste on and see if there's contact. Perfect. I left the protective film on, but I will now remove it. The block was originally meant to be mounted with these screws and springs, but I mean, it's not made for AM5. It sits, it sits a bit higher than usually, which is why I will mount this without the springs. But I think it should be fine. This is also some kind of a flexible steel type and then should probably work just bolting this down. Assembly worked fine. I also think there's decent amount of contact pressure also without the springs, so that was great. I now attached the fan to, so the fan is the four pin connector in the back to the bench table and the three pin connector is the pump. I wanted to power on the system now without the GPU just to see if everything is running. If it doesn't run, we will see. You can definitely hear both pump and fan. The fan more than the pump, unfortunately, but it's also quite some airflow. That might even be good cooling wise. This should be super interesting. Now I will add the GPU, GPU and then we can boot into Windows. I can switch the fan speed down here and it's currently running 50%, which I think should work. Still quite decent airflow I can feel and 100% fan speed would just be a lot louder. So I think it would just keep it at 50% for now and just test it. Idle temperatures look all right. And by this, we can also know that definitely pump is working, nothing is blocked. Otherwise temperatures would be much higher. We will just run Cinebench now, see what happens in terms of temperatures. CPU has set 5.15 fixed across all the cores. It's pulling 130 Watts. Temperature looks looks great. This is much better than I expected. Just about 80 degrees Celsius. Considering how old this is, I'm mostly expecting to run into thermal issues quickly, but this seems not to be the case here. We're still about 10 degrees Celsius away from like thermal throttling. That is better than I expected. 
This also means we should be able to just try run prime 95 and see what happens. Also score is in line. This is much better than I expected. Wow. In prime 95 it looks different with also higher power draw of 150 watts quickly running into 95 degrees Celsius. So we are approaching the limit of the CPU. Still holding the clock for now, but I might have to switch to 100% fan speed. It's definitely putting out some heat. So yeah, it's dissipating, but might be on the limit for surface, just for how much it can dissipate. I think it might be too much. It's already way above 100 degrees Celsius, so I think the shutdown is just, just seconds away. So we're seeing 105 degrees Celsius now. I, ex I was expecting this to shut down, but... Huh. Hope the CPU doesn't kill itself. I'm just wondering why the CPU can run at this temperature and why it's not shutting down. I can't remember that I disabled any temperature protection features. I'm thinking if I should just abort at this point and because I'm not sure if I'm permanently damaging the CPU now. This uh, is worrying. I decided to stop the test with a max of 111 degrees Celsius that I could see under load. I just don't feel comfortable running the CPU and I think it's just a matter of time until you damage the CPU. Even if it's not like dead straight away at this kind of temperature, it would just maybe be damaged or eventually die and I don't have to kill my CPU intentionally. So I just stopped it. I'm not quite sure why it's running at this temperature. Even with fixed voltage and fixed multiplier, the thermal protection should still be in place and at least trigger a hard shutdown. But yeah, for whatever reason, that didn't work out. So I will just reset the CPU and BIOS, run defaults and see what kind of temperature the, yeah, the cooler can hold or what kind of heat it can dissipate. And this now looks much better. I've been running the system now for about 10 minutes under full load. And of course, again, the CPU is running at about 95 degrees Celsius, so on the thermal limit, but you can see constantly about 115 watts being dissipated. And I also added a temperature probe on top of the radiator, just in the fin right here, which shows about 47 degrees Celsius. And I think we will have at least 50 degrees Celsius liquid temperature. I still want to tear it down See how it's built. Take off the cover, probably, if it's possible, to inspect fan and maybe even the pump. This is also more challenging than I expected. I could remove the cold plate screws, but that probably doesn't help. Probably also doesn't make sense to remove these because some of them are hidden underneath the cover and the cover is screwed to, to the fan. How can I remove this? It took me quite a while and I noticed in between here there's a tiny gap and I was able to see something that looked like a screw. Then I checked the sticker and just under the light, under the reflection, you can see something. They probably hit the screws under the sticker. Now the thing is it's not my cooler, right? And I don't want to damage this, but I also want to look inside. So I will try to just grab a heat gun and try to peel off the sticker without killing it. And maybe we can access the screws this way. And there we find the two screws underneath and the sticker did not break, so that's great. I have to remove this sticker, there's no way around that. So covered just with a single 80 millimeter fan. That's all the magic. We have two 80 millimeter radiators and also the pump in the center. I did some math, just checked the surface area and those two 80 millimeter radiators combined still have less surface area than a traditional 120 millimeter radiator. That, yeah, explains a lot. The cooler is just purely limited by the single 80 millimeter fan and dual 80 millimeter radiators. It's, at least for back in the days, for the time, that was quite nice, but these days it's just simply not enough. But also explains the cooling performance and also, yeah, kind of shows that the performance is not bad if you think of just a single 80 millimeter fan cooling everything. I still want to investigate the cold plate further, especially because of the weird stuff that we can see around the screw holes. My plan is to just put it on a table like this and hope that there's enough air inside that we will not have to drain any of the liquid, just take out the cold plate and maybe investigate it. You can see some stuff also dried in there. On this screw I could see that there is a small gasket, a small o-ring or something. 
that is probably to seal off the head of the screw to the copper piece. And you can see on the left two screw holes, the black stuff on top, that is the same kind of o-ring. So I think the screw might be sitting in the liquid and they sealed it off this way and maybe some of the liquid just made its way through that. All screws removed, now we'll just try with the screwdriver to lift this off. We lost a bit of liquid, but not too much. Luckily, most of the fluid stayed inside, but you can also see if we zoom in on there, there are quite some particles, which is something you might be aware of that in the past with aluminum to copper mix AIOs, there were a lot of issues and this is, yeah, it looks very similar to a lot of other yeah, units with problems that I've seen in the past. The cold plate is quite interesting, especially for how much copper they use. You can see how thick this is. It's also quite heavy and the structure is a lot different to what you see these days. So that's maybe comparable to something you find in notebooks or also something you would find on, let's say, a VRM cooler on a motherboard. Looks very familiar to that. And nothing like these days where you would mill directly into the copper or do some skiving to create some of the fins. Overall, I was positively surprised by this AIO, especially if you keep in mind it's dual 80 millimeter radiators, a single 80 millimeter fan. And for that, I think the cooling performance is not bad at all because as I said before, just the surface area alone is less than a single 120 millimeter radiator. And for that, for the size, it's actually quite all right. I'm always surprised with the ideas people came up with already like 20 years ago in terms of cooling, because if you would optimize this, this would actually be quite, quite nice to use these days. And I had a lot of fun testing this. So thank you very much to Pete for providing this cooler to us for the opportunity to test it. There were definitely things they could have done different, especially with the gasket on the bottom. You can see with the stuff leaking from the screw heads, that's not perfectly executed, but just the fact that there was not super high amount of corrosion between the copper cold plate and the aluminum was already quite a nice thing, especially if you keep in mind that it was sitting in the box for almost 20 years. I hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time. Bye bye.